This is the Fox 5 Rev Zone Sports Show, presented by R.C. Willie, your home, your way. Good evening and welcome inside the Rev Zone. Kevin Bollinger coming to you from inside the Fox 5 studios while the running Rebels are over on the Hawaiian Islands taking part in the Diamond Head Classic. It started yesterday when UNLV took on Hawaii. The Ronin Rebels looking for a Mele Kalikimaka as they opened up the Diamond Head Classic with a true road game against Hawaii. UNLV had it rolling from long distance early. Joel Tombwe gets it started from three point range. Then Chris Clyburn follows with another triple and Amari Hardy dials long distance. Midway through the first, Hardy with the drive. He gets the hoop and the harm as the Ronin Rebels built a 23-10 lead. But Hawaii stormed back with a 12-1 run late in the half. Drew Bugs with the three here, and the Warriors had a 28-26 lead at the break. Noah Robotham got the Rebels back even early in the second with this triple. The Rebs then caught fire again. Clyburn a corner three. Hardy with a step back triple. Then UNLV does what it does best, working the offensive glass and getting the loose balls. This one to Tomboy for the bucket and the bump all part of a 14-0 run to open up a double-digit lead. The Rebels held Hawaii to just 10 points in the first 12 minutes of the second. The exclamation point courtesy of Clyburn in transition who throws it down with authority. He had 17 to tie a game high with Tom Webb, where Botham chipped in 16 as UNLV cruised to a 73-59 win. All right, we're joined now in studio by Running Rebels head coach Marvin Menzies. Obviously, we have taped this prior to the team leaving for Hawaii, and we're going to talk a little bit about the progress of UNLV basketball through this non-conference part mm -hmm. as we get ready to start Mountain West play after the first of the year. And we know this is a young team. What do you think of the development you've seen so far? Well, I love it. I love uh, to date where we're at in terms of their engagement. I always talk about their investment into their own development. As you can teach and preach and show them everything to the cows come home, but unless they're involved with really trying to um, absorb that knowledge and get in the gym on their own and continue to work and watch film and so forth and not be distracted by the potential distractions that Las Vegas has. And I, I think our guys have done a fantastic job in that area. So from a from a bird's eye view right now, I'm, I'm really excited about where we're at and, and I feel really good going into conference. One person that's, that stood out here in the non-conference in terms of development is Joel Tomboy. Uh, I think we're seeing the, the makings of a, a big time player a, as we're going through this season here. Yeah, you know, when you look at Amari, who we did the, the special on last week, and then you look at uh, Joel and you look at you know all of the young guys to be quite honest I think they're all moving in the right direction people didn't know much about Joel so uh, landing him didn't create splash but you don't really need splash you, you need the ripple you need the aftermath but you don't need the, the splash is not gonna help you get to the NCAA tournament the splash of a signing of a big player or the splash of uh, his how many stars he has or things like that. I, 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 don't, I don't need that. I need, I need production when the Rebels play. And he's done a very good job in that area as a freshman. One thing that we've talked about too a lot is the guard play. And mm -hmm. you bring in Noah Robotham, uh, local kid, has that kind of senior leadership, has been through it, and his shooting struggles have been well documented here. He had the big shot against BYU. Mm -hmm. But it's more of the, the off-court stuff in terms of bringing Amari Hardy along and everything else that I think that we're going to see benefits from as we move through this season. Yeah, you know, there's, there's a reason that patience is a virtue. <laughs> if everybody could just be patient, it wouldn't be that big of a virtue. Everybody would have it, right? Well, the, the way that we're building the program, we, we often talk about this off-air, uh, how the way that I we have chosen, I say we, meaning the, the staff, the administration, to select high character kids that, that care about uh, the, the community, that take care of their business, that are invested in the, their academic side of being a student athlete, uh, optimum word being student. Those are the things that you grow a program with that will have consistency and be sustainable. Uh, you know, Reno's doing it with a different model, and God bless them, it works for them. Uh, 
but I feel like the model that we have is also uh, proven to be successful as you look across the United States to Gonzaga and Villanova and all these other places and that's the one that we've selected that's the one that I've, I'm used to I know how to operate and, and function and navigate and that's what we're going to do here and that's the patience part that sometimes it's, it gets lost uh, in translation because it's uh, this is a town of winning and losing and, and it's about winning and winning and winning and winning and that's it but that's not it it's it's a part of it but inevitably it will be it and that's exactly what we're going to get to and hopefully sooner than later I hope that it all happens this year but you know we're just going to work towards it every day and we'll see what see how the chips fall it's been a long time since UNLV is has had guys that have stayed three and four years, which is what you've brought to the program. We're, we're going to eventually have a true senior night where it's not somebody who came in for just one year, which right. we've seen over the last decade here. And, and in terms of building that program, just one class moving on to the next. I mean, I think that's the, the system that I think, you know, kind of just is going to move that, that process through. And it's going to start with these guys now and ripple on down. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not recreating anything that hasn't already been out there and proven. Uh, this town preached to me and as I took the job. We want consistency. We want improvement. We want development. Uh, what they didn't say is, hey, coach, you got to win tonight. <laughs> but that's what they want. And, and that's okay. That comes with the territory. And I'm, I'm a big boy. I know how to handle uh, the media and the, 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 the uh, exterior noise. It doesn't, uh, doesn't rattle me at all. You know, I'm grounded and great family, great administration, great support. Uh, we know what, what it's going to take to get there. And, and, we're, and we are going to probably get there sooner than later. And that's what we're working towards. What are you looking to see from this team uh, as we start the Mountain West season here after the first of the year? Uh, you know, we always talk about peaking in March when mm -hmm. you get to conference tournament time. Um, where do you think this team is in terms of moving towards that goal? And, and do you still have, I guess, segments here through January and February that you have um, benchmarks that you're looking for? You know, the great thing about a young team is even when they're having success, you look at them on a after a game and you go, man, we could be so much better. And so there are segments. There's segments to the year. There's a rivalry segment. There's a non-conference segment. There's a conference segment. There's a postseason segment. And all of those give you opportunities to, uh, to really try to grind through your standards of, of establishing the core values that you know would inevitably get you the kind of success that you want. Uh, we have a mission statement within our program within our athletic program but then we also have uh, an, a mission that we're on as a team and and you're constantly trying to achieve those standards on a daily basis to achieve that mission so that's where we're at right now so that keeps the guys engaged and keeps them excited because at the end of the day we have a goal and we want to achieve that goal this year one thing too that we're, we're looking at, I know you can't talk about future recruits here but the UNLV brand still opens up some doors uh, worldwide for you guys to make sure you get your foot in the door to tell them what you're doing with the program. How have you, how have you noticed that kind of expansion here at UNLV that maybe you didn't have at prior stops? Yeah, that's a great question. The, one of the big uh, factors in me taking this job was uh, the fact that I felt like at this stage of my career, uh, I'd like to experience success at maybe a higher level, not just perennially going to the NCAA tournament, but actually winning when you get there. And the chances of that hopefully will happen for New Mexico State. Hopefully you left the foundation in place and they're doing great. They did great the year after with, when I left the program in Paul Weir's hands. And then uh, Coach Jans is doing a fantastic job. We still have a couple guys there playing for them now. But that's, that was the paradigm. We wanted to give them enough of foundation to grow it so that hopefully they would be able to get out of that first round one day. Well, here, I don't have to wait, uh, you know, nine years to do that. Right here, we, we can do it in a much uh, quicker timetable, especially if you get those types of recruits that you're talking about. Well, the first season is over. The second season of the Mountain West uh, begins just after January 1st. Coach, uh, Merry Christmas to you. We're going to talk to you before the new year as well and get everybody ready for that uh, first week of the Mountain West schedule. All right, looking forward to it. Thanks, Kev. Happy right, holidays gonna, to you, too. Uh, thank you very much. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, UNLV head football coach Tony Sanchez sits down to talk about the early signing recruits with his Rebel football team. That's right after this. Stay with us. 
watching the Fox 5 Rev Zone Sports Show, presented by R.C. Willie, your home, your way. Welcome back to the Rev Zone. Vince Sapienza here alongside Rebel football head coach Tony Sanchez. Tony, another early signing day. 15 more Rebels added to the roster. How are we feeling? Feeling good, real excited, really proud of our staff and the way they went after these guys and, you know, got them all on the boat. And uh, it's a really good group. You know, it's a diverse group of guys as far as positions they play, older guys, younger guys. But the intriguing thing about the 15 is 11 of them are early enrollees, and there may be some more added, but having 11 guys, you know, in spring ball, that's a big deal as far as development goes. Now, this is obviously the second year where we've had that early signing period, and you guys have used it as an advantage for this program. Last year, you talked about how it was building depth with the program. This year in your press conference, you mentioned how you're ready for those immediate impacts. Can you just kind of touch on that, what you hope that this group can bring right out of the gate? Yeah, we think there's a good handful of guys in this group that can really be immediate impactful on, on this team. We've got some really good guys returning. Again, a lot of depth. You know, again, I've, I've said it, 19 and 22 on offense, you know, 16 on defense. But there's some guys that I think can come in and really bolster this roster and make us a lot more competitive, um, you know, in crucial situations. And again, you saw what the injuries did to us last year in the middle of the season. Anytime you can add quality depth to it, competitive depth to it, more play or we can do more, you know, have more rotation it'll help you through those humps you never want to say especially in football and you know this more than anybody that you're never just a player away you're, you're a group away how does this group help this program get to where it needs to be wants to be is going well you know two years ago we had 70 scholarship players last year 77 now this group's going to now push us into the to the 83 to 85 depending on a couple of variables but uh now having those numbers there it's going to make us better on special team again it adds more competitive depth we have a good football team coming when we're healthy we're a pretty darn good football team i think you saw it at the end of the year and at the beginning of the year now adding 25 guys to a roster that's almost having everybody come back that ought to give us a chance to really and i've said it before i really believe we could compete for the West. Now I want to talk about some of the guys and, and we're going to start with with the guy Vegas Vic. He, he's trying to break social media with, with, <laughs> with his announcement yep. of dressing up as, as Vegas Vic. Uh, tell me about him. You talked about what a battle it was to get him. How important is he going to be to this program? He's huge. I mean again having a guy that you know has an opportunity to go to you know multiple power fives, SEC schools, Pac-12 schools, you know Big Ten, Big 12 and getting him to, to come to UNLV is a big deal. I mean that, that's, it's good for now. It's good for the future recruiting but then just having his personality and his swagger that he brings. He's got a great work ethic and you know I think he's going to fit in great with our team and, and he's from right down the road you know Norco, California. So again for him you know, a big part of it was location also. So he, he comes in and plays the way we know he's capable of on the defensive side of the ball. I think it'll have a huge impact on our season. One of the other guys uh, that kind of jumped off the page to me in, in, in your press conference was Courtney Reese. And you don't want to talk similarities. You don't want to talk comparables right now. But you did mention the size and what he is like uh, Lexington Thomas. Getting a guy in space, a small, quick guy. I mean, can you just talk a little bit about him, what he can bring? Yeah, we were looking for that guy. You know, I mean, obviously, we, you know, we're gonna we're gonna bring him one more back. We've got, you know, Charles Williams coming back. You know, um, you got Trey Collinsworth coming back. Chad Magyar. I mean, so we got some good guys there, but we wanted that one dynamic space guy, that little guy that can, you know, take the five sweeps, you know, play in space, catch a swing pass, you know, just take that inside dome, cut back, and do some of the things Lex did so well. So um, he's a guy. He's an absolute burner. So if he can be anywhere near as productive as Lex was, that's gonna be a big deal for. Us. And I imagine it, it was going to be a little difficult rolling the cannon into these living rooms, yeah. but how much in your conversations in crunch time was that a key point in in getting some of these guys it, late. It was a key point. You know, the great thing is two of the last three weeks were on national TV, which was great. You know, and all those guys that you're recruiting, they're, they're watching the games, they're talking about it. Usually it's that evening game where not a lot of the football's on. So our guys, they, they watch the end of the season. But, man, watching that cannon, watching the way we, you know, came back and had a great victory, and it just really showed, you know, how competitive this group is. And, you know, and the skill level of a lot of our guys that, that, that had missed a lot of, you know, impactful time throughout the year. But, hey, anytime you can beat Reno, it's a good thing. <laughs> Another good step for this Rebel program, but the recruiting trail continues for February. Tony, that's where we'll catch up with you next. Appreciate Thanks so you. much. Congrats always. on this yep, class. Rebs. We'll have more Rebs on as it rolls on coming up after the break. You're watching the Fox 5 Reb Zone Sports Show, presented by R.C. Willie. Your home, your way. Welcome back inside the Red Zone. We're joined now by Mountain West Commissioner Craig Thompson to talk a little bit of hoops. And when you get a team that was a preseason top 10 like they had up in Reno that made a deep run, how important is that to the conference as a whole success 
to have at least one team that you know could make a deep run in March? Well, it's very important, and, and certainly not to put all the pressure on Nevada. Uh, it's fun to talk about them and their team, say, last year with a, a six and a half, seven actual healthy players on a normal day. What are they going to do with 13 players? That's too many players. You ask any coach uh, here at Media Day, they'd rather have 13 players than six or seven. So they're going to have a fun run. They've got a very veteran team, and, and certainly, you know, last year's expectations have have exceeded uh, or last year's results have exceeded this year's expectations. I think people are, are looking at a, a deep NCAA tournament run. One thing you do have when you get a team that is rated so highly is it's going to maybe help the conference RPI and everything else, which is something I know that you guys have been stressing with non-conference scheduling. Uh, is this a two to three big conference this year? Well, it uh, it's certainly that's the goal. That's the ambition. And if you remember a uh, short five or six years ago we had five teams in the NCAA tournament and that's exactly what happened success begets success so when you're in the top 25 and you win those games that helps your RPI etc so you know the more teams that we can have playing at uh, a top 30 top 40 level it, it's really going to improve the enterprise 16 of 19 years we've had multiple NCAA bids and you know I think the league is poised to get back to that standard that, that we're going to have two or three or four teams in the tournament every year. Last year, there was the flirtation with Gonzaga that ended up not happening, but not to say that the conversation might not strike up again here as we move forward. Is that something that is still of interest to the Mountain West? Well, it is, you know, and I, I think all those conversations are fluid. We're trying to become the best league we can in both football and basketball and all our championships. And, and whenever you have an opportunity to add a, a quality academic as well as athletic program, you, uh, you research those. The Thomas and Mac has been the home of the Mountain West Tournament for a long time. The contract is coming up. Where does that stand in terms of where the conference presidents and athletic directors want it to go and, and where you think it's gonna ultimately end up? Well, so we're, uh, we're uh, contracted through the 19 and 20 tournaments, so we'll be here in March 2020. Uh, we're, we're taking bids, we're talking, including Las Vegas as, as a potential home. You know, our, our tournament in the 19-year history of the league has been here 16 times, so this is a real destination city for our membership, and, and we'll continue to have those conversations and see how it plays out is because there are more facilities here now and the Pac-12 is kind of locked down T-Mobile Arena. Uh, I know in the past there has been some talk about going over to the MGM Grand Garden Arena, but the Thomas and Mack ha has been a, a fit for a lot of different reasons as well. You did try to go to Denver at one point and that was uh, unsuccessful. Is the league willing to take a chance and move this tournament out of Las Vegas knowing what happened last time? Well, it won't be my decision. Certainly that's something that we can consider and the, and the membership uh, will delve into. You know, I, I don't know that uh, uh, Thomas and Mac isn't, a, isn't the best destination for us in this city in, in that other than T-Mobile, there are many occasions we need those 18,000 seats. Uh, there are years that we don't need all 18,000 seats and people contend let's go to a small arena for the neutrality, et cetera. Um, you know, at the end of the day, uh, I think Lon Kruger said it best years ago when UNLV won the tournament at Thomas and Mack, he said generally the best team wins the tournament, period, wherever it's played. Contracts we talked about with the football season coming up. With basketball, how much of a difference is there in terms of negotiations with, with the package deal to make sure that there's as much visibility for especially the top tier Mountain West teams? Well, we'll have 111 telecasts on, on CBS and ESPN, uh, Stadium, Facebook, AT&T Sportsnet this year, some regional, some national. And, and it is very important, but you know, also trying to balance out the challenge of not so many 8.30, 9 o'clock tip-offs. You know, those are a turnoff for the local fan base and it's challenging to come out that late. And so, you know, that's one of the things that we have a great balancing act with every year putting a schedule together. Commissioner, thank you very much for your thank time you. as always. You bet. We'll be back to wrap up the Red Zone right after this. This is the Fox 5 Red Zone Sports Show, presented by R.C. Willie. your home, your way. 
Thanks for joining us for this edition of the Reb Zone. We hope you are back with us again next Sunday where we break down what happened with the running Rebels at the Diamond Head Classic. And we'll also look ahead to the opening week of the Mountain West schedule. Merry Christmas to you and your family. And we leave you tonight with the UNLV Football Plays of the Year. Good night. Zone Sports Show was presented by RC Willie, your home, your way.